Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the APC Line R 600. This is a 600 watt voltage stabilizing power conditioner. Although the power conditioning of this unit would be more like a high quality power strip, say a trip light ISO bar, versus something that's like a isolation transformer, which provides or a resonant transformer, which provides superior levels of isolation and noise reduction. These work pretty well, but the big deal about these units, and people probably, or at least some of my viewers have seen these around, is to deal with situations where you have wide voltage fluctuations on your power line. These are actually used worldwide. This is a 120 volt version, uh, and they of course make 220, 240 volt versions as well. And how these work, this has actually a series of lights on it, is when you have the power line voltage, say when you have products designed for 120 volts, you have 120 volt standard. As soon as the, the line voltage drops below 110, maybe 105 volts, it starts becoming too low for the equipment to, pro to operate properly. And so if you have anything from electronic equipment, computers, medical equipment, point of sale systems, that's where you find these things. And they're in that family of power conditioning equipment. There's essentially five different ways to really condition power. Technically, the best would be known as an on, online uninterruptible power supply. How those work is actually, it's always essentially running off the battery backup, generating a perfectly clean sine wave. Regardless of what the input power is doing, if the input power is good, then it'll charge the batteries. Then you have things like isolation transformers, which would be the second level of just the best type of power conditioning you can get besides online type UPSs. Then you have resonant power conditioner voltage regulators. Those would be number three. These place number four and then really high quality noise filtering power strips like Isobar uh, would be number five. And that's how I'd rate these. So these would be fourth from essentially what is the best type of power conditioning that you need. Just a little bit of extra information there. How these work is they have, you know, a filtering section like a high quality power strip, and then they have a big transformer in them. This is rated for 600 watts continuous, and they are fuse protected. This is one of the older units. They make these, uh, these primarily come in 600 watt, 1200 watt, and 1800 watt versions. This is one of the newer ones that's a 1200 watt, and I don't like it anywhere near as much because it only has two lights. Even though it has two boost stages and two drop stages, this one actually has a light for each one of the boost and drop stages. And what that means is, when, as I was saying, when the voltage drops below, say, 105 volts, it has a special what's known as an auto transformer, which is a transformer, and it has a variety of different taps. And then there's some circuitry and relays in here that when the volt input voltage drops too much, it'll flip one of the relays and switch over to another one of those taps on the auto transformer and give this thing like a 10-volt boost. So your power will drop to 105, and then this will click and boost it up a notch, and it'll go back to 115. And then if your power drops to, say, 95 volts, it'll provide a second level of boosting. How is this able to do that is because of the auto transformer, when it provides that boost, it's going to pull more amps. So as the input voltage drops on this unit, it's going to be drawing more current proportionately. And the same thing is true as if the voltage goes to 125 or 130 volts, it'll drop it down a notch. And if it goes to 140 volts, it'll drop it down a second notch. In those situations, it's actually drawing a lot less than the nameplate amps because your voltage has gone up. And because of Ohm's law, the resistance be or the relationship between uh, volts, amps, and resistance is what tells you how much power you're delivering. So that's generally how they work. The newer ones are more bulbous. I don't really like them. They are like a more sleek type of office equipment. Even though this is a 1200 watt, I do not like the, the integrated receptacles because uh, you can't upgrade them. And they're okay, but they're kind of you know low quality. They'd be considered just standard household grade outlets in these things. And that's always been kind of a frustration for me. I like the older ones. And you know, just like many other products, where sometimes the older is better, in this case, the APC, the older is better. Versus that plastic one, this older model is a steel case, really heavy duty. I like how it's squared off, so you can actually you know, set something on it, or if you need to, you can set it up on its side. That other one doesn't work quite as well. 
It has just a bit more space. This actually is about as big a case as the newer 1200 watt just because they cram everything in that 1200 watt. The other thing I really like about this version Sorry about that pause. I thought I had paused it, but that was kind of an awkward silence. Anyway, at the end of this video, I will also get inside this. So I have this plugged into a Variac. So that's how I'm going to be able to vary the AC power going in and out of this. Right now, I have the Variac set at 115 volts. We'll go ahead and turn it on. And we'll turn this unit on. So it does actually, and what I liked about this unit too, is it does have a buzzer in it so that if you have any real uh, serious power issues, either there's an issue with it or the voltage drop is just, or the voltage range is just totally out of range, uh, it will beep at you and warn you that there is a serious issue. So these things are great, particularly people who live in more remote areas where you'll have voltage drops or maybe heavy industrial areas where lots of big motors are turning on. Um, that's where these really come into play, where this, the volt you have big voltage swings, tens of volts. Um, and in Europe, that would be the equivalent of 20, 30, 40, 50 volt uh, swings in your power. That's really where these come in, is that they will help smooth that out. Even though they're stepped, they're not perfectly smooth. That's what a resonant uh, power conditioner transformer works. And I have one. Uh, Solo is the big name of those guys, and I'll make a review of those. But these are steps. So as it drops down, these will click up and uh, click back down. They do have pretty fast response rates, but it does just jump two levels up or down rather than being like continuously regulated. And that's why they're kind of placed forth. We'll turn off the uh, light here just so you can see these lights in the front. And actually, let me go and get a multimeter set up. A quick safety note, it's always interesting when you do need to measure the voltage on power output such as these. I'm going to try to be absolutely as safe as possible, but I recommend you don't do this unless you really know what you're doing. I have what is colloquially termed a suicide cord. Uh, I don't really like calling them that, uh, but in this situation there, it's just funny how applicable it is because you have to have a receptacle. Uh, with a couple of terminals. I could have done a little better job, put more insulated terminals on. But the big thing you do if you ever need to make one of these wires is to cut one shorter than the other so it's very difficult for them to ever con come into contact with each other. And then I am using insulated alligator clips. So sitting on this piece of, piece of leather, we're going to be in a pretty safe situation. We're going to turn that off, plug this in, and I'm going to show you the way the voltage steps up and down. Um, these specification grade outlets, I always recommend high quality spec grade outlets, but you could almost lift this unit just by the plug uh, due to the extra heavy duty construction and high uh, grabbing power of those receptacles. Let me turn this on. Make Okay, we're... Oh, you can see that in the video, excellent. So what we're going to do is we're going to simulate. This is now showing the output voltage of this unit. So if we have the power, the input power, and it starts to drop down. And let me move this back a little bit so you can see the lights. You can see that actually it's pretty aggressive. As soon as we had 115 volts, it stepped up the notch. What it's told us here is when the light has dropped down a notch, letting us know that the voltage input voltage is running low. But you can see that it's putting out right now 126 volts. And this is a Fluke 87 multimeter, so that's a very accurate reading. We can actually do this. This has a four digit mode, so now we're getting super high resolution on that input vote. Uh, 126 volts. Now, the input is right about 110 right now. So you can see that 10 volt step. And this is what's always kind of annoying me is how these uh, will run pretty high. 126 volts is right there at the top of most equipment that's rated for 110 or 115 volts. We'll continue to drop the input power down. We can see that the voltage will drop. Probably till we hit 115. 
And yes, until we hit, and we're now at 100 volts input. And we can see it's now lit up to the orange light, letting us know that we're two levels down. And then that's how these uh, have the rating, because I can still drop this all the way down to, say, 90 volts. And we'll still have 115 volts. Touch that a little bit more. There we go. Now we have 115 volts and we're 90 volts of input. So that's how it can handle such a wide range because pretty much no equipment and all other electronics will shut down at 90 volts. So these can definitely be handy. And then this, the other direction is the same thing. It'll start clicking back up through its stages. We'll get all the way up, I'm sure, to right about 126 volts. And there we go. We'll drop down. So right now we're at just above 100. And... Oh, I see. We're just still in the middle. That's what it was doing. There we go. Now it's just dropped it back down. The light went up one notch. We'll do the same thing. And now the light went down another notch. And we're at almost 135 volts input. And uh, we'll go ahead and go right up to 135 volts. And we're at 118 volts output. And that's another situation is uh, with a hundred uh, voltage like that, 135 going into your electronics can also be very hard on them. It's one advantage switching power supplies have is they can handle a wide swings of input voltages, making these types of units much less useful than they are, say, for audio equipment or medical equipment or or uh, electronic test batch equipment. Many of it just needs to have a pretty narrow input voltage range. And that's essentially how they work. So these are pretty neat units. And I always like these older ones that had that uh, nice setup for the uh, lights. We'll go ahead and turn this off here and pull that out. Anyway, that was just kind of the review uh, demonstration of one of these. Um, just kind of showing how they work. And you may be in some type of situation where you do have wide fluctuations in your power. But you don't want to have the weight or the size of an actual uninterruptible power supply. These types of units are uh, out there and available. This tech type of technology has been around for a while, and this is a, a great form of power conditioning. So you could use an isolation transformer plugged into this, and you have super have high quality power conditioning as well as voltage regulation. The other nice thing about these versus what's known as resonant voltage conditioners or voltage regulating power supplies, and I'll do a review of a Sola soon, uh, is the fact that these will take all, will deliver the full amount of power until either the voltage drops, you know, way too low or uh, the circuit breaker actually pops. Where the issue when you overload uh, a resonant type voltage regulator, the voltage will crash as soon as you put in too much load. And it's always been the kind of the Achilles heel for how nice they are. They have that Achilles heel. Well, this will run until it just pops the breaker. The voltage will drop and actually can potentially cause issues. So those types of resonant transformers have to be really outsized. They're really noisy. They're really heavy. And we'll get more into that. Anyway, I'm going to open this up just for any viewers who do kind of want to see what's inside a unit like this. I did also want to mention that they do make them huge. Here we have a large trip light. This is a 1500 watt continuous and 1800 watt uh, peak. This is an older trip light, but it has a plastic case. This is a nice unit, uh, but it just still isn't quite built like this old APC stuff with the steel cases. Uh, the one nice thing is the trip light still does use kind of a standard sizing and uh, mounting for the receptacle, so this could be upgraded. But they do make them like this. I mean, this is a voltage regulator that you could plug a heater into. Anyway, I'm just going to get cleaned up a little bit here, and then we'll take a look inside. Here we are, we're gonna take this apart. The one thing I also didn't mention about this APC is that it was a little flimsy on the top part, especially when I, it wasn't very well supported, so I had to put in these side screws. Ever since I upgraded the uh, receptacles, it was just flexing a little bit too much. And that's kind of the neat thing about being in the projects is you do stuff like that. You can kind of do little upgrades and like on this, you know, you upgrade the receptacles and you upgrade 
uh, maybe the case like I did and it's a nice little setup. Pull out these screws here. Really like these older versions a lot better than the newer ones. And then the whole case just slides off. If I had it far enough back, I could slide it off. There we go. Really nice solid case in that. And there it is. Here's our large transformer. We can see our uh, purple input, or excuse me, those are our output wires. Our input wires, where are they hiding? They are up here. And see, I'm not the best with electronics, but this transformer has five taps. It runs in line with like the hot wire. And so you have one wire, it just goes in between and go, and this is a transformer where it's essentially one piece of wire and then they, they have taps at different positions along those windings. And it goes straight through. And depending on where it the, the output wire essentially uh, is connected to, it'll boot, it'll provide a voltage boost or voltage drop. And so that's how this works usually. And I should, yes, yeah, so this has three relays. And so how this essentially works is that you have a relay, which is the neutral position, and then it will click if it needs to do a voltage boost or will remain turned off if it needs to do a voltage drop. And then the other two relays uh, are what actually switch these windings here. And you have a total of three relays, one to control up or down, and then two other relays to control the two up, upward steps and the, excuse me, the two downward steps. These really were built to last. So the copyright on the circuit board and on the control chip uh, is 1993. So uh, this thing is 25 years old and still works exactly as it uh, did from day one. Uh, really a testament to how good APC equipment really was back in the day. What we can see here is a bunch of heavy components. These are the uh, these are what you would find in a very high quality, uh, like a trip light isobar, very high quality power strip, where we have lots of large capacitors. These things here are moves. They're the surge protection. They're not as good as what's known as avalanche diodes. Avalanche diodes can clamp at 200 volts, and they can take essentially an unlimited amount of uh, surges. These metal oxide varistors, what they essentially are is they're a resistor that when the voltage gets too high, and because of the way they're designed, when you get to about 330 volts, that is enough voltage to cause it to start. It's, sent, it's called micro-arcing. But what happens is, is that you get beyond a certain voltage and then these MOVs start uh, really becoming conductive. And what they're doing is they're actually shorting out the input and shorting the surge through them versus passing it on to the rest of the equipment. The issue with them is that they have to uh, be such high voltage, 300, 400, some are even 500 volts, which isn't that great of regulation for surges. You know, you can't really have your equipment take four and 500 volt jolts. A lot of it will survive, but a lot of it won't. But these are pretty fast acting and they're reliable and they're cheap. And the reason that it is such high voltage is because the AC, these are absolute. And so it isn't 120 volts RMS, it would be 172 volts. And so they're rated about double uh, that 172 volt peak. The issue with these is that they're kind of used once. Once they get hit with the surge, they may be okay if it's a light surge or they may just pop right then. If they are okay, what ends up happening is that they're kind of partially used. And now they'll be much closer to the 200 or 250 volt um, uh, maximum voltage. They, the voltage that they react at drops after they've been hit, even by a t um, very minimal surge. So the next time a surge comes around, it doesn't have to be very big at one at all. It could just be some heavy noise of some electric motors turning off. And then they'll kind of clamp a little bit again, and they wear themselves out. So they don't really last forever. These are in great condition, so obviously this unit has really never experienced a surge before. Other nice aspects of this that you would find in, uh, like, nice audio equipment is a separate power transformer. They're not just using, like, a... 
a bridge rectifier and just rectifying the input voltage or a little noisy switching power supply. They actually have a separate step-down transformer that they, of course, still do rectify, but it's nice because this transformer provides isolation and a very clean power for all the drive circuitry. And it's surprising how much circuitry. We can see that this is a fairly complicated unit just to do what it does with the, all the power filtering and the power monitoring to control the relays, its own dedicated power supply. And then you can see how I put in this new receptacles. It was pretty easy in this unit. I did one other thing, which was add a uh, additional 16 microfarad capacitor, a properly rated one for this application. And so that just provides a bit more noise protection or noise filtering. Uh, these capacitors here are pretty decent, but they're polypropylene and they're uh, really low value, even though they are high performance. So this had some capacitance, actually a, a good amount of capacitance. And a surge protector, this would be excellent, nice large inductors. Uh, but I wanted to have just a little, if I was going to upgrade it, just to have it be a little bit extra capacitance for even more noise reduction and being able to have, you know, surges of things turned on. So that was the other upgrade I did was this and put some nice belding on it. And it's actually tied directly into the extra terminals on these receptacles. Another reason to use professional grade or specification grade receptacles is because the wires go in and then you can use these heavy duty clamps. So they're really, really solid. And then they have uh, a four holes on each, you know, for the uh, each prong so you can put in all the wires that you need to and they can all be directly wired right into the receptacle itself. Anyway, I'm going to end this long video on this note, but I wanted to show people inside these things. I, this is kind of always what's fascinated me was these types of electronics. And so I always find things to make a video on. I did want to mention that even in addition to having a circuit breaker, if it really gets overloaded or for some reason something, a wire shorts out or something inside, they do have a ceramic uh, tubular style fuse as an additional level of protection. Uh, so the APC equipment was always uh, nice equipment. They charge a lot of money for it, but it used to be that uh, you actually got every dollar you, want, you put into it, you actually got out of it. Just really pretty impressive electronics with nice heavy duty wires. All these are fully insulated uh, covers over these uh, spade terminals. Really, these check a lot of the boxes. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do support the Caddis, Ma Caddis Maximus channel. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.